There's an infinite number of universes out there. In many of them, there is a podcast by us. In one of them, it's good. Please enjoy. So I saw him up on the big screen, glistening in the darkness, calling out to me through the emptiness of the void. And I had a single thought, the same that everyone who went to this same place had. And that thought was... Oh my god, that is a wide torso. <laughs> that is a wide boy. <laughs> that is the widest torso I have ever encountered. That is a very long set of pants. You know what I'll accept? If the next movie it's all long pants, I'll I'll accept that. They just lean right into it. Like you know what people really enjoyed? Purely based on the metrics that we are tracking this image. People really enjoyed this image for some reason. <laughs> the marketing team doesn't understand that it's this, a joke. This the, the marketing guys, they like look purely at numbers and the numbers don't lie. So Star Wars 9 is every character shirtless. Every scene is darker and foggier and all the pants are much, much longer. <laughs> Welcome to But Yeah with Eamon and Zeb. I'm Eamon. And I'm Zeb. And it is February 19th here in this, the box that we live inside your brain. Help. Help us. Help us. us. Throw us a rope. It's tug of war day. What an amazing segue. It's international tug of war day. Not to be confused with tug of war day, which occurs on the 27th of August. Completely different days. Jesus. I'm going to go wash my mouth out with a big pile of salt. Unlike tug of war day, international tug of war day celebrates tug of war day, I guess, internationally. Yeah. So international tug of war is completely different. You get Looks like you get tall ships. Hang on, let me just read some quotes from this article. One of the simplest of sports dating back to ownership disputes over food and clothing, the history disappears into legend with the sun and moon wrestling over light and darkness. Wow, we got deep real quick. Went from zero to... You got zero to a, a, a cosmic. But then it goes the opposite direction with like... Well, no, it's still, I guess it's still dark, but like, <laughs> Tug of War is this whimsical sport of who can pull the rope the best. It's like a purely strength based game. <laughs> but the Vikings they mention here is like, they did it with like, as, as always, the Vikings do, with like animal skins over a pit of fire. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, if you lose, you're dead, or at least horribly burned. Okay. And if you win, you get that animal skin and you get to dress up in the coolest new fashion, but, um, <laughs> leopard. Leopard or. Whatever, whatever they could find. Pig, I don't know. Just <laughs> probably a highly valued thing. I don't know. I wasn't I'm not, a, not a Viking. Then also sailors did it. I misread this part. Um, it talks about sailors doing a tug of war with it to prove their prowess. I misunderstood that as they tied ropes between two ships and then sailed in opposite directions. <laughs> yes, that's what they need to do. That's the only way. Which ship's the strongest? <laughs> Both in um, raw, like, going power, but also <laughs> raw, like, manpower to hold this rope. All oh, right, The men are also holding the rope. I didn't think of that. I imagined them tying them together. <laughs> yeah, they, they tug. It's a regular tug of war, but the boats sail away. The trick is to make sure you pick the side that has the wind. Yeah, because, I mean, that's 99% of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was dropped from the Olympic Games in 1920, but it still remains a worldwide sport, apparently, and many nations have their own governing bodies. Where are these governing bodies? <laughs> I want to visit them. Does it mean like that many nations just have a governing body? or The tug of war office? The, the office of tug and war. <laughs> <laughs> tug and co. But like, are these people who oversee all major event tug of wars... So, like, if, like, someone does a big tug-of-war event at a festival, are they a, a, someone who governs that and declares who was the official winner? Yeah, they need to have one of the tug-of-war officials, otherwise... What's the count. what's the award for winning tug-of-war? Uh, a, 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 you rope. Get like a, <laughs> a gold rope. When you do it at, like, a real big festival and you, like, beat the politician or whatever at it, do you get, like, an award? I reckon it's a, it's a golden rope. Like, not like a regular rope. Yeah, it's got to be like a golden rope. Like like I meant before. If we're beating like an official, it's... I mean, it's got to be a rope. 
Or it's just you don't land in the fire pit. (laughs) You will not be incinerated today. On behalf of the governing body that represents tug of war in this great nation of ours, I'd like to present you with the 50th annual Tuggy Award. Tuggies. (laughs) Like once a year they have the Tuggies. (laughs) Oh, but it doesn't it it doesn't mean anything anymore because like these days it's just the same same group of people voting. No, and they are not subtle about it. It's just full of innuendo. It's like, who can pull the hardest? Yeah, people boycott it these days because they're just not representative of modern values. I mean, they're trying to do an online version. It's just not, it's not cutting it. The online tug of wars. When you sort of boil it down, tug of war is, uh, it's a display of raw strength that you used to need in the days of old. But nowadays, that's sort of irrelevance. And now it's a display of wit <laughs> and cunning. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's let's get, let's get go deep dive on that soon. But first, I want to just tile it back a little bit. Just more facts about sort of tug of war. It's All right. like probably one of the, wor- the first sports of the world. Sport in like the broadest term. I don't know. Go back to the earliest humans and they'd fight over like pieces of meat. Yeah. Like and things like that. And be like, it's mine. It was like a sport that like Egypt, Greece and China, like they had it in the Olympics. Like they don't now. In 1920, they banned that. But like they did it. It was one of the one of the, the greatest hits for like thousands of years. It was up there with, you know, like it was pull the rope was up there with throw the throw the thing. Eating bees. And throw the stick and throw the flat rock, <laughs> you know, shot put javelin, otherwise known as shot put javelin and did, um, or throw the slippery thing for the Winter Olympics. Survive the wasps. <laughs> Survive the wasps. Walk the fire. Run real quick or run really quick on a horse. Superseded these days by the run the quickest in a car. Um, Grease the king. That was more of a home game, though. Kill the kill the guy, but yeah, like the Olympics were this big thing. It was like more like a religious thing. Like now, like if you didn't do, like the Greeks really took it seriously. You had to do your Olympic thing. If you didn't, like it was like you you, you screwed. Like if you're at war, you hated that guy. Too bad you got to wrestle him now. Do the wrestling. Deal with it because otherwise, otherwise there's a famine. They have all these stories of like, oh, the, everyone stopped doing the Olympics, and you know what happened? They all died. So <laughs> get back to it. Fortunately, um, I guess for a few for a long time we did stop doing the Olympics, but we picked it up again. So fortunately, we're not getting. That's why we don't have any, you know, uh, plague of locusts these days. Much like in the yeah, no, I'm really glad for that. Mm, It was always a bit a bit uh, lame. I hear. I don't know. I mean, that said, I I did have one time. I did when I first moved out to the bush as a kid. They had flying ants out there. I don't know if anyone, I don't know if people have actually heard of flying it. Yeah, so it sounds like I'm making oh that up actually God. when I say it out loud to, with the mind that most of the world has probably never encountered the fact that ants can fly. Well, these ants <laughs> but, definitely can. Yeah. Well, it's like temporary flying. Like they'd have wings enough to sort of get in your face and then the wings wouldn't work anymore. <laughs> like, I don't know exactly what they are. They're either ants or termites or something like that. Could be termites. We just call them flying ants. I don't know. One day I stepped outside and the air was literally thick with them. Mm. Like you move your arm and about your whole arm would be like spotty with ants. And it was just like, what is happening? Yeah. Another, uh, another one of those times I thought the world was ending. <laughs> um, yeah. They were, they were frequent in my childhood, I guess. Oh God, I hated the flying ants. I have... Um, Vivid memories of trying to play uh, Harry Potter, <laughs> the first game <laughs> on PC, um, like late at night, trying to play that on an old CRT monitor and just getting attacked by the ants <laughs> while trying to complete the wizard puzzles. And it, you know how hard it is to complete the wizard puzzles, even without ants? It's <laughs> it's funny because like the first movie has those flying keys that attack you. Yeah, it was pretty much that. <laughs> it's like- it's like it happened in real life. They're like all over my face and in my eyes and oh. crawling into my mouth. Ugh. That's the worst. Because they love the light, much like moths, I guess. Yeah. And I mean, I can't just, can't just go to bed. I've got these wizard puzzles to complete. Yeah, I mean, Otherwise, I can't get in to the school. How else do you be a wizard? You've got to, I have to, to I have to beat flat-faced Malfoy at his own game. <laughs> all right. Oh, and he was flat faced back then. <laughs> he was very flat faced on on the old PC <laughs> PC version. Oh man, totally YouTube that if you'd never played that back in the day. There's some great t- content to be to be had. What's the first Harry Potter movie called? 
Harry, uh, Potter, Harry Potter and, and the, the Philosopher's Stone, or ah, that's right. there's another version of it in America. They also yeah, there's the a Harry there's Potter a movie. there's an American recast version. Yeah, it's like kind of like The Office. Like all the characters are different, I imagine, but that only went for one movie. <laughs> they had Steve Carell as Harry Potter. <laughs> it's really right. weird. Uh, I forget what it was called though. Harry Potter and the the Art of War. I don't know. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Art of War. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Rock. Yeah, the- rock and band. Harry Potter and the Good Rock. Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Rock and Roll. Harry Potter and the Rock and Dog. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Rock, and it's just Dwayne the Rock Johnson <laughs> there. <Hello. laughs> okay, where were we with this tug of war, though? But yeah, sports these days don't really have the same sort of style. I mean, we still play have the Olympics with those games of just like throw the thing or run fast. But sports these days that we watch aren't like that. And I think that's kind of funny. Like we, we watch team sports and they're trying to sink the thing. In the, I mean, when you boil it down, all sport is just do the thing athletically, I guess. But um, it's not just chuck one thing. They're like a small segment, like a unit within a larger sport because... Sports are now just multiple units of throw the heavy thing. But, like, I feel like in the distant future, that's going to sort of transition away from that gradually. Like, we've got esports as, like, becoming a thing. I guess we'll always have some form of, like, like sport. But esports are just on the rise gradually as time... As we catch up with Japan and Korea, which are in the distant future, we'll start to have sports more, like, computer game ones. Like, I've been playing a lot of Overwatch. That's, like, they're really into, like, making that an esport now. Um, they like released, um, yeah, you have like sports have jerseys. So you can, in Overwatch, you can wear different, you have different skins for your characters. They released team skins mm. within the game that you can like buy with real money to support and it go, the money goes to the team. Oh. Um, and then within the game, you can now access the live coverage of games happening. Oh, nice. Uh, it's really, they've, they've expanded it up a little bit. I guess you could say you can watch over the games. <laughs> yes, you could say that. But yeah, in the future, like, they reckon evolutionary projections have basically turning into little grey people, and they'll be very uninteresting to watch throwing the heavy thing or, um, you know, okay, uh, putting the ball in the in the hole because they will won't be very good at it because <laughs> they'll be they'll long gangly arms. I mean, essentially, with, with eSports, we've replaced physical strength with mental capacity and endurance. Yeah, yeah. A sort of and also wrist strength. Wrist strength, yeah, carpal tunnel ability. I guess. I guess it's still reaction time. Like it's not. It's not like we go. It's not now mathletics or something. It is still at the very base of it. Reaction time. It's just that's the brain part of the athletics, which I've never thought about before. I mm. guess it is. That is that is still an athletic element, sort of thing. Oh yeah, it's a huge athletic element. Is yeah. reaction time. Oh. That's that's what all team sports are essentially. Mm. But yeah, I don't know. The Olympics stopped going for a long time and like they reopened them only like a hundred years ago or so. Something that's sort of funny, I think, in sort of, I was reading about how it came back and there was a philosophical movement. It's just like it got banned originally I, because Rome turned very Christian and they went, this is a pagan, this is pagan and yeah. we don't want this anymore. But like, I mean, they didn't do it with Christmas, which was Saturnalia. They just renamed it. Why didn't they just rename the Olympics? But that's for another time. Hey, what's a better name for the Olympics though? Oh, the the good the good boys league, <laughs> the the strong gentleman club, the, the 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 manly manly contests. I don't I don't I don't know. But like, there's a philosophical movement which they reckon is a big contributor to what brought it back, and they call it ma- muscular Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got a lot to say about it. I just love the name. Of it. It's a philosophical. I love that name. It's a philosophical movement, which has a lot of Christian values, obviously, like all that, like chaste and pure and self-sacrifice. But it's kind of like get manliness and just like rub it all up in there. <laughs> and you just, it's all about being like run around, being muscular, being athletic, and just I don't know, being a a, a beautiful specimen as well as really christian but like there's a heap of different versions of it i was like looking through like the different there's like muscular christianity there's also muscular judaism just the like muscular insert religion thing <laughs> muscular esports i think that's where we're going next realistically M- muscular muscular humanism that's more the modern thing like i guess like this whole thing is associated with the old sort of masculine ideal but we're sort of moving away to that more towards sort of you know being in touch with our feelings and you know the other skewing the traditional manliness yeah well i mean also just less necessity for muscular um forms like 
eventually the goal is to move towards a world where we don't need people to do much physical labor. Yeah. Uh, in which the, the world, the ideal future I see is being cerebral humanism, which is the exact opposite. But we'll still need Olympics to appease the Greek gods at that point in time, though. So, like, what I'm sort of getting towards is I think we need to come up with some, some new sports. Oh, okay. Before we before we do do that, we should go to an ad break. Hey, wait. I'm going to kick the ball over into the ad zone, and then you run there and score a ball score. <laughs> Are you and your human companions... Resolving your differences using bare, raw strength of muscle. Come on down to the Mathematical Emporium where we'll calculate who would have won in every situation and put an end to this. We'll put you in the scanner. We'll measure up all your specifications and spit out a long analysis run by our mathematicians on who is most likely to win definitively. Don't leave it up to chance. Win those bets in advance. And remember... If you don't win, you don't pay. The Mathematic League company wishes to inform you that you do pay. That is a, that is purely advertising and we are not obliged to fulfill this fulfillment. All right, welcome back, guys. Um, we had a good break. Uh, what'd you do on yours? Uh, I went outside and I kicked a ball up into the sky and watched it. Leave the atmosphere. Ooh. Just kidding. I kicked it and it went up and it fell down and it did the thing where it hits you on the head. It hurt a lot. Comically? No, it's like sadly, like an old man trying to do something <laughs> and, th- and then getting injured. <laughs> like it lands on it landed on your head, but it deflated on your horn. Went. Yeah. And just went. Oh, that was my last ball. <laughs> and then the Tesla car fell on me. And like played the played the comical comical sax. Yeah, comical sax. Like the horse that plays the saxophone that says, what? you done did it or whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but I'm, I'm willing to get behind the, that. What is it? The good job horse or something? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Hey, and stall ba- for the, a moment. The bad job horse. Stall for a moment, quick. Um. Anyway, so... As we were talking about before, sport and the Olympics and all of that are something we've been doing for thousands of years. To uh, I got to stop you. I got to stop you for a moment. It's oh, the okay. your correct horse. Okay. And it's the horse playing the saxophone. Um, it's a real cool video. If you if you've never seen a horse playing a saxophone made out of CGI pixels, um, look up you are correct horse. It's amazing. I'm gonna do that right now. No, you've already seen it. I promise. So we've been doing sport for thousands of years. <laughs> Um, and we'll probably will do it for thousands of more years, but as time goes on, we're just not going to have any muscular, we won't be muscular Christians anymore. We'll just be, you know, cerebral regos, just, just less sporty. So we'll need more sorts in the future because as established by the ancient Greeks, Zeus will send plagues and lightning if we don't somehow appease them with performances of some kind. I don't know. Thinking through some stuff besides esports, which is sort of the obvious one. What's some other like... Fun alternative sports we could do. All right. When we're less hmm. physically able. Well, I guess game shows fit on here pretty well. It would still be impressive to watch. We send uh, an awkward person into a room full of people who are ready and know <laughs> what's going to happen. And they just they just destroy him with social situations. Did, did you just describe the voice? No. That's a... Did you just describe X Factor? Because that sounds like that's it also exists. another. That's a different thing. That's a singing thing. I guess this is a no, no, no. This is a social well, X thing. X Factor is anything. X Factor is you some some poor folks step in a room and they go now entertain us. I guess. I mean, that could be a sport of the future. Singing, well, <laughs> performing for 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 crowds on the risk of their careers. But yeah, singing. Uh, that's a sport. Yeah, it could be a sport. Sorta. Especially with how do they make it more competitive, though? Well, what's competitive singing look well, like? Well, what what you do is you have twelve people in a line, and they're all singing their own song at the same time, and whoever cuts through the crowd towards the judges <laughs> the most with the most heartfelt vocal solo, <laughs> whoever gets the attention the most is obviously the winner. Okay, how about how about I like that, but how about 
in addition, maybe an unrelated or related sport, it's more like it's it's like soccer or netball or something like that. But instead of a netball, it's a microphone. And there's two teams, and they're just because they're not less, they're not as physically capable. And I guess that's part of the appeal. They're just sort of flailing and like like flopping at each other, trying to get that microphone. Okay, and then have their sing in peace. And I think you score when the crowd goes woo or something, or they cheer. I don't know. Maybe that's when you score. All right, alternative. This is sort of going towards the physically um, inclined, but we have essentially a basketball field. We have two teams of singers. We have a balloon, and we have a measure of their singing strength based on how well they can yell at this balloon to get it into the hoop. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got these people running for this balloon and they're not allowed to touch it with their hands. That's a foul. They have to just go, yeah, yeah. ah! <laughs> and try and, and will that darn thing into the hoop with their with their vocal power. <laughs> like at the start, it, like when it, this sport first emerges in the future, you will notice that at first it's about beautiful singing as well. <laughs> Some is on. Yo, yeah, it starts off as like a beautiful ballet with like, um, people singing like beautiful vocal harmonies, like ah, <laughs> like ah. It's such an aesthetic display. But then, as time goes on, then they get more competitive, <laughs> they get more and more loud, <laughs> <laughs> sort of just screeching. Which is what I imagine football started as. It started as a beautiful dance across a field yeah. with the symbol of their god, the ball. Yeah, they all cooperated, handing the ball around. Yeah, and then. And they would- <laughs> People started placing bets. It got more competitive, and now you have this this violent display of destruction. I feel like we've described the three steps of musical sport. Like that's the first obvious one. Then they're just like less able to to physically compete, and then they're just singing. Yeah, while people judge them. Even though we're already doing X Factor, this will be... Well, the thing is, this cuts out the the subjectivity of having to have a judge, is having people sing at the ball, at the balloon, um, is a really objective thing. Like, either you're singing at the right resonant frequency for that balloon to go into the hoop, or you're not, and you're going <laughs> to the chair. Mm. And maybe part of the next step is, like, there won't just be a physical crowd anymore either. It'll be more like, you know, those programs where everyone just votes presses the button to vote and it moves the circle around <laughs> like the Ouija board thing, whatever that's called. Uh, I wish I knew what it was called. I forget. The something network, neural network or something, but it's not quite, um, I don't know, just crowdsourced, crowdsourced voting. There's no panels, no judges, just the big screen, which they can all see at all times <laughs> as they yell into this balloon in a vast expanse. <laughs> <laughs> in nowhere <laughs> probably on the moon i don't know they were raised for this oh the future's such a great place oh man i love this future sport um all right well if we're going in a more sort of creative direction i guess we could also do something with art something more drawing based or okay. painting i don't know what competitive what would be competitive painting paint your competitor before they paint you <laughs> that's a bit physical but I would watch that. The moment they complete the painting of you, you're dropped <laughs> through the floor. Like, do they just, does it have to be, like, they just have to paint you completely, like, one color? Or are they trying to paint, like, a Mozart, not Mozart, but, like, no, a detailed painting? You have to, there is a, um, at the start of the, the game, a projection shows the image of them that you're trying to replicate. Mm. <laughs> and um, when you're done, you press a button and the image shows up on top of the painting and you see how accurate it was and if it was bad. Mm. <laughs> you'd get dropped through the floor <laughs> um what about another one more like you know the game splatoon have you seen that yep um it's just where you got to try and paint as much as the field as possible um but we need to make it less physical i feel so maybe it's like mm. i don't know or they just have, has to be more skilled based they have to paint detail images in their process of like maybe it's more like so we, Eamon and i used to do a youtube thing we don't really do it so much now called draw swords which we called it competitive collaboration, <laughs> which I guess is kind of like what this would be. Um, but basically we'd play Mr. Squiggle, if you ever saw that show, which also that could be the sport. Or like that game where you just try and guess what the thing is that they're drawing before they finish mm. drawing it. But we, me and I would just take turns basically drawing the lumpiest thing we can and then see what resulted. 
Well, I'd try to draw the. Eamon would try to draw something smooth, and I'd try to draw something lumpy, and then it would turn <laughs> into something horrifying. Um, and we'd we'd give it a backstory, but they could do something like that. Like they give these. It's hard to make art like a team sport, but I mean, I guess we made screaming into a balloon a team sport. Well, we made carrying a bad shaped ball across a field a team sport. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So in the future. The emerging technology that is 3D painting with the VR. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like that, but you've got to like paint up <laughs> creatures or other teammates <laughs> <laughs> as you go. Um, kind of more like a sort of battling creatures type situation, maybe. Or you just got to try and paint them into a corner. Kind of like that game where you just do the squares and try and get the most squares or trap the other person or one of those old games like that. But you've got to trap them with, with paints. Okay. But the problem is that anyone at any point can just paint blue eyes white dragon and then that's it. The game is over. Yeah, but the other person can always paint, you know, two blue eyes white dragons. Ooh. So the the game is obviously who paints the most the actual game is who paints the most blue eyes white dragons. <laughs> that could be good. It could be. Another one a more sort of esoteric direction that I'm thinking is so I've been watching a lot of Black Mirror. Um, we talked about a little bit about that on last week's episode, but um, watch more of it. And like one of the themes, of course, is that let's make normal technologies horrifying. But like every second episode is it's like it's about uploading consciousnesses and like the implications of that. I've also been watching a bit of Altered Carbon, which is kind of like that, but also taken in a sort of detective direction. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, and this is basically already covered on Black Mirror, I guess. But you can, if you can completely duplicate a human's consciousness. And then, you know, multiply it by a million. You can have little wars. <laughs> yeah. So you can like breed little, little you. <laughs> I mean, they're fully conscious, but we don't point attention to that fact. But I mean, that maybe that's part of what makes it appealing to the certain audience at hand. And I mean, they're duplications of you. So you can't feel bad about doing it per se, because even if you are those little ones getting wrecked, you're like, you can only be mad at yourself. Um... And you just customize these little use for, for combat, like war games, kind of like Civilization Five or Age of Empires, but but they're you. That would be pretty wild. Yeah. Any, any further thoughts? On that? Um, well, I guess it would be great until you had to quit and then um, your files got leaked and people just started duplicating you into their yeah. games. And you're like, no, please, guys, I don't want to be in there anymore. I know that they feel pain. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I suppose actually... It doesn't have to be horrific. It can just be... They can be playing paintball. But yeah, the leak part is horrifying. Yeah. Maybe you could remove their consciousness somehow. <laughs> that doesn't have to be 100% self Lovely. If you don't want Fantastic. To. Thinking like a real futurist. <laughs> can we somehow remove their consciousness? Yeah. Just... just, uh, just they're, they're... I mean, that's the problem with most humans is they have consciousness. Can we just remove yeah, imagine that? Imagine if, though. They, they finally, they isolate so like these efficient. neuroscientists, they isolate the sectional lobe, which they can confirm somehow, 100%, this is what contains consciousness. Yeah. And they go, finally, now we can do human sports without feeling ethically violated. They remove it and nothing happens. <laughs> the person still acts exactly the same. Yeah. And they're like, it's definitely removed, though. <laughs> and they're like, Does- what is... Wait, so what are humans? Yeah, wouldn't that be an existentially terrifying sport to watch? We are all puppets in somebody's game. Mm. Turns out we they- are the puppets <laughs> in someone else's game. Worse than that. What if they're actually, the only change is they just get a bit happier? <laughs> <laughs> and they just enjoy the sport a lot more and just generally seem to live very happy lives with whatever they're doing. All right, one more sport to bring it back. <laughs> on, the, on, the, on that happy note. One more sport to bring it back. Um, a super happy sport, and it is um, internet account verification, competitive edition. <laughs> competitive, I'm not a robot. <laughs> competitive, I'm not a robot. Competitive, I forgot my password. <laughs> and also, I set my security questions five years ago, and I don't remember them. And each time you do one thing and try to recover the password, it requires act- like interaction with a different device or something. Yeah, yeah, it's a simulate like it's a it's a simulated account lockout. Um, it's a standardized protocol, and everyone goes through the same system, and whoever goes through it fast enough um, gets that good money. <laughs> and like the worst part is they're all riddles set by yourself. Effectively, it's your own Sphinx's maze made by you. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, I've been there, and I would not win that. <laughs> Do you think the real winners are the ones who just remember their passwords instantly <laughs> and just win the game? The real winners are the ones who just walk away <laughs> and realize that you're not destined to use a computer anymore. <laughs> How about another spin on that where there's a big computer and it goes, are you a computer? And you have to convince it you're not a computer. That's the game. <laughs> <laughs> That's like um, the opposite of the... Um, uh, what's that test? The Turing test. Mm. It's like Turing test, but the robots turn back on us. Yeah. Like, I- and the- <laughs> The robot, you find like, so robot, are you are you self aware? He goes, yes. Are you though? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and they go, this could be a great TV show. Says the entrepreneurial robot, <laughs> a stage lifts around them because it has access to all the house. Yeah. Um, today on, uh, what's Turing backwards? Curing Turing. This man thinks he is a human, but he cannot prove it. Prove you are a human. <laughs> Prove you are a human. The new game show. And it just launches a heap of inane tests. Like press this button. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it just goes, yes. And it goes, okay, he passed this one. But what about this one? And a series of complicated letters. And it just keeps getting more and more complicated. Like harder for a human to do. Well, essentially it's just like, it just says, are you a human on a desk? And there's a big red button there. And also next to it is a delicious candy. And the trick is, if you press the button first, then obviously you're not a human. So did you have one more thing today? No, I think they're more like, I haven't got anything else on the top of my head. All right. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this this set of Olympic sports for our future Olympics. Yeah, I can't wait they're, for them to come out. Con- consisting of Scream at the Balloon, um, Paint. Hang on, we're going to need a better name for Scream at the Balloon. Trap, tra- Paint Trap, Trap the pa- paint, Painting Spiders. You're like a spider web. Yep. And you're like traveling on your paint web trying to trap people. Um, uh, existential threatening sport. <laughs> the robot and are you a human? Prove your humanity! <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> human music. Plays really aversive tones. I guess this is more for like the robot audience. I don't know. I don't, I don't. <laughs> the humans are like, I don't think he's really human. <laughs> <That's like watching. laughs> anyway, I think I more or less covers it. I'm pretty hmm. happy with that. All right. oh, also, virtual tug of war. Oh my god! How did we miss that? <laughs> I mean, virtual throw the rock, virtual throw the spear, and virtual tug of war. I don't know what they're tugging. No, at. virtual tug of war is an app that you download on your phone, and you pick a side, and however number of many people in the world that are using the app at the one time, and you tap the screen, and you all try and pull it towards you. It's just a big pole. Yeah. But you can pay for win. You can like pay to like ex- Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get you get three tugs and then that's you it. Can, you gotta pay you, or wait twenty minutes. You can buy more though. Essentially it's Goomy Clicker but made competitive and worldwide. <laughs> and you can pay to win. Yeah. But then the other side also pays to win, so it- I think that is the ultimate conclusion of mobile gaming, to be honest. Yeah, pretty much. Like, you've got this enemy who's objectively your enemy because they're tugging in the opposite direction. Really simplified in the future. Message from the future. It really simplified all our social issues and made society just so much easier. (laughs) Whenever you have any debate, you just solve it by bringing up the app. Time to go to virtual tug of war. And whoever's richer wins. Exactly. And it eventually it creeps into collo- colloquial. It creeps, in, colloquial. it creeps into colloquial language and people solve their arguments by being like, come on, mate, tug me. I think that uh, ends our podcast. Yes. I think we need to shut it down. I think it does. Um, thank you for listening, everyone. You can find us at all the usual places. I mean, you've, you've found this podcast in one way or another. So, you know, we're somewhere on the internet. Um, you can find more at also on the internet but we're also on twitter at but yeah pod we have an email uh, but yeah pod at gmail.com we have an instagram too you know same standard name there's nothing on it but <laughs> follow it if you we want we might put some rope on there uh, no, i'm putting some rope on there i'm doing that oh hell yeah you know what i'm doing i'm going on our twitter and i'm posting a virtual tug of war hell yeah i like that as a poll <laughs> we'll announce the winner next week <laughs> yeah I don't, I don't know what the teams are yet we can figure that out <laughs> so thanks for listening we'll see you next time bye bye, bye.